They take any side of any question to stir up confusion. They have borrowed Hitler's hysteria techniques, Hitler's hate-arousing tricks. This is all part of the pattern of communist world conquest. And that's where you come in. Americans first fell into communist hands as prisoners of war in 1950. They are marched through Korean streets. They are starved, sleepless. Many are walking wounded. This is the start of another revealing chapter in the story of communist atrocity. Americans have known nothing like this in past wars. In the past, when a prisoner was captured in battle, his war was over. In World War II, Nazi prisoners of war received treatment according to established principles. The dignity of a soldier as such is upheld. Prisoners receive adequate food, water, rest, and medical care. The International Red Cross inspects their welfare. Although interrogation is routine, the time-honored phrase, name, rank, and serial number is duly respected. American interrogators have long known that humane treatment gains more information than violence. During the Korean War, captured Chinese and North Koreans were treated in the traditions of Article 17 of the Geneva Convention. 27,000 Chinese and North Korean prisoners of war choose to remain with us rather than return to the communist homeland. Americans find a new kind of war in Korea, a deceptive war, a war fired by hate. Chinese and North Koreans herded to death by their Soviet Russian masters. Propaganda posters are found in frontline positions. To the communists, this is a propaganda war. They question captives more about their politics than about the tactical situation. These enemy soldiers have been told nothing but lies about America and the cause of the Korean War. Frontline prisoners often receive brutal treatment at the hands of non-specialist troops or civilians. At this point, medical treatment is poor. Food and water are rarely received. Because friendly forces are so close here, this is the best time to escape if possible. The Reds ask, why do you fight, instead of what outfit were you in? Indoctrination and propaganda are combined with interrogation. These scenes recorded by North Korean communist news photographers show a more fortunate group of prisoners. Others, in the winter, are marched barefooted through the snow. Some are marched 60 miles with their hands tied behind their backs. No food, no water, no sleep. The wounded who fall out will be shot. Over them all hangs the threat of death. But here it is relatively easy to escape for those who dare. Searching is slack. It is easy to conceal weapons. It has been found that the longer you wait, the harder it is to escape. Escape depends primarily upon hoarding food, knowing the direction to your own life and evading communist civilians. Communist interrogation for tactical military information is not skilled. There is little questioning by technical specialists. The Reds are more interested in converting you to communism, so you will volunteer everything you know. The communists will commit atrocities if it serves their purpose. These are... American bodies are found among civilian atrocity victims. Atrocities are committed along the path of the advancing troops to spread terror and break morale. It's an old story. In World War II, the Polish army surrenders to Soviet Russia. Soon, 12,000 Polish soldiers are deliberately massacred. These documentary scenes were recorded by German photographers in the summer of 1942. This atrocity was committed by the Soviets at Katyn in the Ukraine in 1940. Mementos found on the bodies of 12,000 Polish prisoners of war. These Soviet film scenes record the formation of the so-called German Liberation Committee in 1943. This is a familiar sight now, like the communist peace petitions. 
Thousands of German prisoners of war who signed this document were liquidated when their usefulness was over. This happened to the Germans, to the Poles, the Japanese, to every army that has opposed communism on the battlefield. Sooner or later, survivors escaped to tell the true story, as did this young German, von Einsiedel. You must understand that in fighting the communists, you are up against a new kind of weapon. You can recognize an air attack, artillery, tank attack, infantry attack. And now we have the attack on the brain. In the United Nations, on October 26, 1953, Dr. Charles W. Mayo, representing the United States, described some of the methods the communists used in their attack against the human mind. It has become very familiar to the world. I shall not read these sworn statements at this meeting, nor discuss them in detail. They speak eloquently for themselves. Dr. Mayo is discussing the brutality with which American prisoners of war were handled in Korea using the methods of the Russian scientist Pavlov. These two sworn statements show the dates when, after interrogation and physical and mental torture in solitary confinement lasting over three months. Out of Pavlov's laboratory came some interesting experiments that were a combination of biology and psychology. Pavlov was a reputable scientist whose work is perverted by the Soviet state. Pavlov experimented with dogs. Communism experiments with human beings. First, it is proved that an animal will learn by the deliberate application of pain. An animal learns to obey. This banner is similar to the one American prisoners were forced to carry through Korean streets. The Pavlov experiments show that animals are born with certain instincts. Ducks, for instance, can swim immediately after hatching. Basic instincts, such as hunger, can be exploited to control the activities of animals and men. A rat is starved for a time. It is put into a maze. Food is placed at the exit. The rat soon tries to learn the required way out. To get food, a starving man will also learn to behave as required. These scenes from Russian films show that the required signal for food is soon learned by a hungry monkey. A pattern of behavior becomes established. Don't let them make a monkey out of you. Hundreds of American prisoners of war successfully resisted these communist methods. The desire for food is also used to control the actions of prisoners of war. Like the monkey, he learns that certain signals mean no food. He must learn to distinguish between different signals. The monkey's behavior is easily controlled. A flashing light controls this animal. Pavlov even controlled the flow of saliva in a dog's mouth by the beat of a metronome. Pavlov found he could drive a dog mad. Pavlov's technique employs the conditioned reflex. It is an experiment within the brain itself. This dog has been taught to expect food when he hears the ticking of a metronome. This Russian film points out that conditioning by sound will deceive the animal into having the same physical reactions as if he were being fed meat. As this deception continues, the dog falls into a semi-conscious state of exhaustion. These Russian experiments on dogs led to similar experiments on human beings. The metronome ticks. The patient reacts as expected. To the communist, a man is no better than a dog. This is communist indoctrination. The theory of Pavlov 